The following program contains bathroom humor and sexual innuendo. Viewer abstention is advised. Hello, my name is Steve Smith. Welcome to a bold new television experiment, and arguably the most innovative and exciting program since Cop Rock. In this limited series, we take old movies and re-edit them and change the soundtrack so that I become the voice of the leading character. For example, in tonight's movie, the lead character's name is Steve Marsh, who would originally say a line like this. I never missed you so much before. <sighs> but through the magic of post-audio editing, I become the voice of Steve Marsh, saying whatever I want. I'm getting a penis enlargement. Remember, only the lead character's voice is altered. All of the other characters remain the same as they were in the original movie. And that's it, uh, except for the title. Originally called The Brain from Planet Eris, it now becomes The Surprise from Planet Uranus. Let's watch. Radon gas seepage? You don't know dick about that. Don't kid yourself. Couldn't be a plane flying over the bombing range with an atomic warhead. Not even close, Sparky. Maybe just a blast of cosmic energy from the sun. Impossible. I'm just going to touch this map right here. You tell me what that is. The base of Mystery Mountain. Hey, we have a winner. Anybody home? You know it's three o'clock and you mad scientists haven't even stopped for lunch. Oh, no wonder I've been getting insulting messages from my stomach. Hello, Sal. I picked a great spot for our honeymoon. A mystery mountain? The most godforsaken spot on the desert. Hasn't seen a human being since 1900 when the prospectors gave it up. Sure must be hot out there. Dad says he can't understand how the army missed building a base out there. It's so miserable. There's that buzzing again. Look, it's buzzing. See, Dan, it's buzzing. I'm feeling small and vulnerable. Dan, we're going over to Mystery Mountain. But not before we eat. No, I've got the fries down to a beautiful call in the barbecue, and, well, you just have to eat. Come on. Do I look gay in this hat? standard. I had no idea there were so many rocks down there. I suppose we're about to pick up our gear and walk from here. You suppose right. Bring my hair dryer, will you? this hole. Is this called a cave? Yeah. Somebody's going to a lot of trouble. They had to have a good reason. No. This is just a trap. Nobody would go in that cave. You'd have to be an idiot. You know, Dan, we should have worn deodorant. Listen to Mr. Whiny. You can't beat facts, Steve. You've covered every inch of this passage, and there's no one here. I may have just wet myself.
That's not just flatulence, it's foreshadowing. We'll be right back. If I may set the scene, Sally is worried because Steve is late. It's called Jeopardy, not Wheel of Fortune. Let's get back to tonight's movie. Hello? Oh, oh, hello, Dad. No, I haven't heard from Steve or Dan for a whole week. You know them. They get real carried away if they find anything unusual. Yeah, huh? Jim called, and if it's all right with you, we're going up to Mystery Mountain this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Surprise them. All right, Dad, I'll see you about one. I'll have lunch ready for you. Okay. Bye-bye. Steve! And feeling horny. How about yourself? Am I? <laughs> You two have been up at Mystery Mountain a whole week. It was a very educational trip. I learned how to French kiss. <laughs> well. Anne liked it. You never kissed me like that before. Wow. When I'm away, I get urges. You should stay away more often. Where's Dan? Who? Oh, right, Dan. What a wacko. He quit his job, you know. He's gone to Las Vegas to be a male stripper. What's the matter, Steve? Just some cramps. But you're different. It's OK to be different. Everybody has the right to express their own individuality. Excuse me, Sally. What happened out there? Tell me. Sure I will. But first, I'd like you to put on your thong and shave my back. No. Not until you've told me the truth. Sally, remember? The girl you're going to marry. I know you, Steve. And I know when there's something wrong. You're blowing this way out of proportion. Yes, I committed a social error. But that was just to turn you on. It's manly. After we're married, that's gonna happen like virtually 24 hours a day. You acted funny. And that way you kissed me. Like that? It makes my toes tingle. You've got to see a doctor. No way, Sally. No more proctologists. Me. Because you are a recognized nuclear scientist. Because you have operated places on Earth I want to go. I chose your body very carefully, even before I knew about Sally, a very exciting female. We don't do threesomes. Why? She appeals to me. There are some aspects of the life of an Earth savage that are exciting. 
exciting and rewarding. Things that are missed by the brains on my planet, Terra. She doesn't even like guys with brains. She'll do very nicely. As long as you are alive, you will have me using your body, directing your brain, turning your simple little will off and on. Hi, Sally. Dad. Dad. What is it? What's the matter? It's Steve. Something happened to Steve? I don't know. He, he was here just an hour ago. I can't explain it to you. He, he was changed. I think he was ill. He, he looked like he... Why, I just can't tell you. It was awful. You think he's ill? No. No, he never looked better, but... It was as if he was a stranger. I'll talk to Dan. He'll know whatever it is is bothering Steve. I wouldn't worry. Steve says Dan went to Las Vegas. I don't believe it. It's not like Dan. There's something wrong. Did it ever occur to you that Steve might have something on his mind? Well, I'll run to the lab and see if I can help. If I were you, I'd put another place on the table. kind of a flatulence attack. I can only stay a minute. Steve, something's the matter between you and Sally. What is it? That's no big deal. She pretends not to like it when I bend over and cut one. <laughs> She'll get over it. It's more than that, Steve. I know Sally pretty well by this time. She's worried about you. Why didn't you come back to the house with me and have lunch with us? I don't want to be rude. But if I have one more pickled egg... Steve. Just tell Sally, I gotta work this out on my own. Of course. That's what you want? Beano is what I want. Steve, I think you're ill. May I call Dr. Parker for you? Parker played around with my pee pee. I think we could all use a little break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the surprise from planet Uranus where there are plenty more surprises to come. Yes, this is Steve Marsh. I'm a nuclear scientist, expert, pipe-smoking, smarty-pants kind of guy. I'm having some gas problems. Not right now. A minute ago. Bad, real bad. I know you're having all the world leaders there at Indian Springs. It's a free thing, right? Well, I'd like to drop by and threaten everyone. Friday? Thursday's actually much better for me. Okay, fine. Gotta go. Earthlings. Dad. I am from the planet Eris. I was sent here by my leader to capture the criminal Gore who escaped from Eris to your planet Earth. Gore is insane for power. That's why he came to Earth when he escaped from Eris. Only when he is in his true form can he be killed or captured. Can a human kill him at such a time? It is possible. In his true state, a heavy blow on the point known to your surgeons as the Fisher of Rolando can kill. If we could tell Steve of this Fisher of Rolando. That is very dangerous. It would have to be done when Gore was not inhabiting the body. If Gore even suspected your friend of having this information, he would kill him immediately. Not you, Sheriff? Hello, Steve. 
Hello, Wiley. Shouldn't you be out harassing visible minorities? Drove over. Talk to him. Looks like a shot of overproof rum. All right. What have I done? Oh, record nothing, Steve. Just got some questions I want to ask you. Oh, about my sperm count? That was a lie. No, it's about Danny Murphy. Dan? Is he pregnant? Well, it depends on the way you look at it. He's dead. Dead? Is it serious? I was hoping you could tell me, Steve. Found his body in a cave on Mystery Mountain. You went out there with him, didn't you? Yeah, I got with Dan. He's quite a kisser, you know. Yeah. So I understand. You're in a little trouble, Steve. You're the one that's in trouble. Yeah, I got gas. It's a very special, in-your-face kind of gas. I got one in the chamber right now. I'm taking you in, Steve. No jail can hold this. <laughs> at the meeting at eight. Gore is tired because he has had no opportunity to return to his true form for oxygen. He will be over the 24-hour period. Yes. He will be very vulnerable. You mean that spot near the top of the brain known as the, the fissure of Orlando? You have a good memory. to you and to your governments is to take what this this man says as a most serious matter thank you gramps i want everybody who's had sex with livestock to come over here to the window can you see that fake model aircraft i see the plane Whoopee! <laughs> Guess that'll teach those hotshot airlines to misplace my luggage. Now, this is my plan. I want all of your sewage systems, septics, all your Johnny on the spots. I want your outhouses restrooms, two holders, all your industrial waste facilities. Your workers will make methane bombs day and night following my blueprints to build the most powerful invasion force ever gathered in the universe. Wow, I smell an Oscar. We'll be right back. We now return to the exciting conclusion of the surprise from planet Uranus. I gotta tell you, I don't like where this is going.
unable to grasp the importance of today's events. You are about to succeed where Caesar, Napoleon, and Hitler have failed. Through me, you will have ruled the world, but I will rule the universe. <laughs> You will be dictator of the world in spite of yourself. While I am on this earth, you and Sally and I will live in a splendor such as the world has never known. This would be a great time for us to make out. <laughs> hey, that wasn't me, it was the dog. It was the dog. I love a movie with a message, don't you? Next week, our film is Hot Rod Girl. I dub in the voice of the Hot Rod Girl, Lisa Vernon. You're taking your brother's death way too seriously. I realize that now. That's Hot Rod Girl, next time on The Playhouse. I'll see you then. <laughs>